Hi and welcome. We're going to look at Barrick Green, or is it Barwick Green, by Arthur Wood. It's arranged here by Ian Farrington and it's from the book Grade by Grade Piano Grade 3, published by Boozy and Hawks. And this video will have three sections to it. I'll play it first of all, then we'll work through hands separately, nice and slowly, and then at the end I will play it through at a reduced tempo as well. I think that's always a really useful thing to do. And this uh, piece of music is very famous in the UK as being the theme tune to that very long-running radio soap, The Archers. <clears throat> So now let's run it through each hand separately. We are in 6-8, which is a compound time. One, two, three, four, five, six, da, 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 da. It's, a, it's like a jig, if you like. Um, and we are in G major, aren't we? Left sharp in the key signature. So after you've played a few scales, that's in G major or in E minor, and a few arpeggios, let's dig in now. The right hand, of course, has the tune. And I would suggest that from the off offset, think about the articulation as well as just what notes you're playing. So just in the first two bars, there's an awful lot to think about there. And the staccato notes, or the non-staccato notes, don't necessarily happen where you think they are. So take your time to think it through. And that last one, Tenuto, is just a way of saying to make sure you hold that one down. Let's carry on. An answering phrase there. And I like that fingering at the beginning of the fourth finger on that E, because it means that our third finger and second and first are ready for that G chord thing. Link those two up. And it's a very classical thing to do, isn't it? But die away at the end of a phrase. It makes sense. Fourth finger. Held on. And I jump the thumb there. For that final bit of that phrase, the answering section. And then we have a sequence. Because it's a sequence, I've got the same fingering each time I do it. You could start with the second. I'm starting with the first purely from the point of view of one, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. And notice that the first note of each bar there was um, staccato. Um, and staccato, I don't think we want really, really detached. It's not. Uh, we don't want that. It's just, I think, it's more that. We could notate that differently. It could have been notated possibly with a quaver than a quaver rest, but it looks so much easier notated as it is. Um, let's move on. Uh, answering phrase to finish off this first section. And I like that fingering, getting the thumb onto the D there. 
for a smooth final two bars. And then we have the second section, let's carry straight on. Um, I think we probably need to tap down a little bit here. <laughs> I'm doing that, it might look a bit contrived, but it, it, it has got a lilt to it, hasn't it? And then next bit, a bit louder possibly, doesn't say so, but I'm hearing it even more confident. And now, forte. So if the first bit was mezzo piano, minor, mezzo forte, See, it's made up of little two bar units that are repeated. Uh, it works so well. Let me go through that slower. So our hand is right in the thick of these black notes here. So I'm taking care to make sure my hand is really in there. I don't want to be coming here and having to move my hand, so my hand is right there. Second finger on that B, I think, but then the thumb so I can hold on to it and make that movement really smooth. And then similar, I get the second to that B. Yeah, let's carry on. I get like the third onto the F sharp. There's some finger swaps going on there, aren't there? Four. Again, the thumb on that D, just as we did before, so that that can make sense. Again, sense of the phrasing there. And I like four, two, three, one, just like we did earlier. Which takes us back into the tune. I'm gonna keep going. accented note at the end there. Let's look through the left hand now. Basically lots of chords going on here. It's definitely the accompanying hand isn't it? And they're all staccato. You could get a bit stressed out looking at this initially. You might see well I've got a dotted crotchet that's staccato. In the right hand I've got crotchets that are staccato and quavers that are staccato. Are they all meant to have different lengths? The answer is no. Um, uh, it's, it makes it just easy, as I said, alluded to earlier, it just it makes the rhythms easy to read and all of those notes, whether they be dotted, crotchet, crotchet or quaver, they're all slightly short. That's what it means. Um, so don't get hung up about having to hold one on slightly longer than the other. Now, left hand on its own. It's a lovely progression, that isn't it? It's a good sequence for improvising over just those two bars. Let's carry on. And we want that as smooth as possible before we go back. That's very common. It's a four D chord with one, two, three, four, with number four instead of number three. So we call it a 4-3 suspension. It's a lovely sound, isn't it? That sort of sense of leaning, sighing. Remember the C natural in that one, because we will have played some C sharps. Quite a leap down there, to five and two, I think. Half. 
4-3 suspension. And quite a leap. Now I was doing, I think, 5 and 2 there because I wanted that to be smooth. But it's a little bit fussy, I must admit. The thumb would there would work as well. The third finger on the G and jump the thumb there. All sorts of options there. The second section. A bit quieter. We've gone into a minor key, haven't we? What minor key are we in? We weren't really staying in that minor key, but but we were there just for a, this is stop play, but we were there just for a moment, weren't we? Had a sort of and then it went somewhere else. And by this point, we're now loud and take it to hold on to the bottom note. I've got to hold on to that top D while I put another A down. And on that A, we need quite a lot of tone for it to ring out for all of that bar and plus a bit of that bar, plus a bit of that bar. It's going to last a long time, so quite strong. And I did play with at one point the idea of, I'll show you. The second time I just brought out the left hand line a little bit. <laughs> Let's carry on. Hold that. It's a great finger exercise, just those few bars, and can I hold that while I'm playing that? I'm divvying up the fingers of the left hand. Oh, need to hold on to the B there. sharps to work out what's going on there and you've seen the fingering I just used there I had a moment of, of doubt whether I was doing the right fingering but um that certainly made sense with me and then we've got some naturals phew with that D nestling down the bottom there I like one two one two to get that line nice and smooth It's always difficult to play two notes absolutely at the same time, especially with third and fifth finger. There they are, okay, here we go. So be fussy with yourself there. Ah, I do like those seventh chords. As smooth as we can there. through with both hands together but I'm going to deliberately go really quite steadily and slowly. Um, let's see if we've got all the detail in there as well. <clears throat> I'm thinking that sort of speed. One, two,
There's a lot in this piece, very satisfying to playing, especially if you are a fan of the Archers. And um, I hope that's been helpful. Thank you very much to Penny for requesting this video and good luck, best wishes. Any questions, do get in touch. Bye-bye for now.